Welcome to a new episode of the Azure Enablement Show. In today's episode, we are going to talk about an enablement scenario for data management and analytics. Welcome back. My name is Thomas and I'm here with Mike to talk about the enablement scenario for data management and analytics. Before we go and speak about data management and analytics, um, Mike, can you explain us a little bit about what scenarios are and why they are so helpful? So think about where we are today, right? Enablement scenarios provide specific guidance and resources and best practices for customers to successfully adopt as they're along specific journeys. We're not just talking about individual products anymore when we talk about solutions. So think about use cases such as SAP, AI, cloud scale analytics, hybrid, multi-cloud, modern app, the list goes on. Or you pivot to industries such as retail, healthcare, and FSI. They are all looking to understand how they can onboard their solutions, their industries with this specific guidance. And what scenarios are doing is they're enabling scenarios principles such as high value specific actionable assets such as Azure DevOps plan templates, reference architectures, um, assessments, Azure landing zone implementation and options. The unique piece is it's one single content location. No longer do you have to search Bing over and over. The content is all aggregated from our cloud adoption framework a well-architected framework, the Azure Architecture Center, and also gives you, I, gives you a plan on skilling and resourcing to best implement these scenarios without having to go to multiple document pages. Oh, that's definitely super helpful to have these different scenarios. And again, pulling all this information together uh, makes it definitely easier for customers to get to the right information uh, when they need it. So when we speak about data, why do we actually need these scenarios and why we do we actually need that guidance? So let's reflect back a couple of years. At 2019, the Harvard Business Review, uh, the understanding why analytics strategies fall short for some but not for others. In that report, 80% report struggling to become mature users of data. 55% report data silos and data management difficulties as roadblocks. And then from the research that we then did with our customers and our kind of customer base, we see that customers are challenged, uh, have challenges and outcomes. You know, when we look at it and, and when we look through, many companies are spending substantially more on their data platforms, analytics tools and staff to manage them. They're going through iteration V1, 2, 3 and 4 to try and get where they need to. They're not thinking about scale. How do I try and proactively leverage the data and insights to realize the business value? How do I uh, go through the challenges that mount to a complex barrier to achieving a modern estate and a governed estate? So challenges that we heard very, very clear was poor data quality, data silos, shadow IT popping up because main IT cannot deliver. So the business is creating their own shadow IT, ever growing volumes of data. And then how do you balance access and protection? Now, the desired state, for example, is that we, we hear customers saying they want to proactively use their data and insights to predict business drivers. But they're questioning how they do that. You've got unified data management analytics, buzzwords. How do you do that? Um, you know, and then you've got governance that really they're looking to enable access and flexibility. They want to be secure and compliant and have a fully integrated um, environment out of the box to get away from these kind of shadow IT, these kind of spurs, these kind of uh, silos that they see today. Absolutely. I mean, that's also what I hear from many of our customer conversations is data is obviously very, very valuable, uh, but also very challenging, especially when it comes to compliance scenarios. So how do I actually build a data driven enterprise? So there's multiple points that you need to consider. First is your strategy. Before you look at anything, what is your plan? What is your strategy for a data-driven enterprise? So how do I democratize data? So how do I have a modern data center strategy on decentralized uh, data ownership and 
democratize uh, Asian of data ownership. We want to enable teams to quickly deliver that business value and to continue the innovation. We don't want them to be blocked because there's a ticketing system that you have to log a ticket. One team deals with that and then another team deals with it. And you end up in what we would term a ticket in hell of, of not being able to really just get your business driven forward. Then there's that holistic governance. So imagine your data governance ensures your data is discoverable, accurate, trusted and protected. When talking to our, our customers, this keeps coming back. If you imagine you've got data silos, how do I discover that I've got data silos? I need to know where my data is. I need to make it discoverable. I need to have a strategy and a process that sits over the top of it. Uh, how do I standardize my organization and classification regardless of the line of business ownership? Then there's that day-to-day -day management. So that kind of centralized kind of data management operation. How do I manage that data governance on a day-to-day -day basis? How do I drive the consistency, as I said, and then increasingly, we're looking to mature those analytics. So line of businesses want to be able to use centralized uh, services to build their own analytics platform, or they want to be able to have the right data at the right time to gradually use more advanced analytics tools to gain insights into the business, business that they are critically looking at every single day. Oh, that's amazing. Um, so... When it comes to this scenario, how does it uh, address this so that organizations can set up for success um, and building the foundation uh, for these four pillars of modern data strategy? So if we actually had to take a look here, you know, we're, we're able to really call out many, uh, at least four to five pillars that we need to consider in our plan and our strategy. And there's especially in our ready phase as well. So think of like democratization. So let's look at each of the businesses and understand and prioritize the line of business needs. Let's also evaluate that current ownership, create and implement and iterate upon that decentralized plan. And let's give guidance on how that can be done. When we look at the governance, how are we gonna put that strategy together to map the data and environment? Catalog, scan and classify data. How do we connect data across a distributed data landscape? At an enterprise level, you can have companies with many different um, locations. You need to be very aware of those compliance around where you're holding those those where you're holding that data. Equally, you know, you look at kind of the operation of data management. You want to implement uh, agile data management and build upon top of what we call a zero landing zones, which are part of the cloud adoption framework. Uh, we want to make sure that they're fast, they're scalable, and we can always deploy a foundation of security and governance and compliance best practices. We also want to, as we say, secure and strengthen our data security with authentication, authorization, automation, and then integrate data for consistency across the business. Uh, and then moving on, you know, there's always that plateau of self-service but as we look towards the cloud and we look towards the hybrid kind of scenarios, we really are hearing from our customers that we're looking for self-service enablement to understand, distribute data across the data domains, to bring them closer to the users and drive that business value to empower the line of businesses to deliver powerful analytics with advanced analytics tools, effectively creating data assets as a service. Oh, this is fantastic. And again, mentioning like the hybrid scenarios and multi-cloud scenarios where you want to get all this data, doesn't matter where it's actually uh, is located uh, all together and use these management tools is great. Now, you also managed, uh, <laughs> talked about landing zones. Uh, so can you tell us about how this integrates in Azure landing zones as well? Absolutely. I think before we just look at how that uh, Azure landing zones really comes together, let's take a bit more of a higher level look at uh, the data management analytics scenario. So as a whole, you can see this all encompassing circle that we have here. We've talked about the things on the right hand side here, the scale, the distributed architecture, cloud model and reduced time, time to deployment. But what we're trying to bring here, you see, is we don't want to just talk about writing the next book, the next document. It's how do we make it real for yourself? So we're looking at reference architectures. There's assessments there. 
deployment templates, skilling, well architected, hence why we are calling these enablement scenarios. And we're building on top, as we've already said, of these landing zones. So cloud adoption landing zones, uh, it's cloud adoption framework and the Azure landing zones that we have there. And when we, we scale this out, we think of our, our scenario in two elements for these landing zones. We think of them as a data management landing zone, which is very, very much along managing the governance of the environment, of the whole of the whole of the platform. Then we're thinking that as we scale our analytics and we have our use cases that we ha have, we might have different regions that we need to have data landing zones. These are very much for our data products, our data domains, our analytics kind of workflows that are working in, in this piece. But this is great in from a point of view that you could look at a pretty picture. We want to just take it apart from that, you know, and and as such, just to dive in at a high level where we think of the governance, we we think of kind of as if have you really driving that insight, that uh, that management, the ability to scan sources. We're also thinking of how do we have data contracts so that we know where our data is flowing through to, um, and. We think of kind of standardization of automation, automation whilst trying to incorporate into these Azure landing zones. Now, this is one landing zone that looks after your governance across the whole of the, the platform, as I keep saying. And then we, we come to the next part, this data landing zone. So this data landing zone is all about our standard services that are in there. Our ability then to have Azure Synapse driving your analytics workloads uh, and your use cases. And then our data consumers that are also taken from this. But equally, we want to make sure that if I've got one data landing zone, it can communicate with another data landing zone. And then finally, when we, we look to bring it all together, we want you to go and play with this. We actually want you to more than play with it, but actually try and use it as well. So we, we've tried to take these reference implementation as a, a simple one click and DevOps deployment options that allow you to go and uh, run this go and deploy to the Azure, go and look at the DevOps pipelines and get out hub actions that allow you to set this up. And this has all been tested and validated with customers. So you can be assured that what we've got in those particular repos and DevOps options uh, is to what Microsoft would define as the standard for that security, for that governance, uh, and, and really aligned to that well-architected framework. No, oh, it's awesome. And again, I love that we're making it very easy uh, for customers to implement that. Now, if I'm a customer now and I want to learn more about this, where do I go? So you've got three, two locations that you can go in, go and do this. Uh, and they, we're looking to go and look at the Microsoft docs that have been published uh, and they've been available for some time now. And we call them data management analytics scenario. Uh, there's a short link that's available for that. And equally, you can go and look at these sample templates as well, where you can do that exact thing of deploy to Azure and get it spun up, play with it, understand what is going on with the scenario. Awesome. Thank you very much, Mike. And thank you, everyone, for watching. And as always, check out aka.ms adopt. <laughs>